in this video we are going to study regarding the design of beams in the previous video we have seen the basics of uh, how to design a beam and what is the general procedure to design a beam so let us solve one numerical problem now so this is the question we have a rectangular beam which is simply supported on supports of 230 mm width support width is 230 mm the clear span of the beam is 6 meters the beam is to have a width of 300 mm and the characteristic superimposed load is 12 kilo newtons per meter we have to use m20 grade of concrete and fe415 steel so based on this data we have to design the beam so if you see the general concept design means what we have to do is that we have the length now based on that length and based on the loadings what we have we have to fix the dimensions of the beam what is b and what is the depth of the beam and what is the reinforcement that has to be provided in the beam so this is what we have to do in the design of beams as the width of the beam is all, uh, already given to us that is width of the beam is 300 mm so only thing is we have to uh, set now the depth of the beam so first one is width of the beam it is given as 300 mm the next support width is 230 mm the next is clear span that is L is equal to 6 meters this is also given clear span of beam is 6 meters then next they have given live load as 12 kilo newton per meter so live load is given as 12 kilo newton per meter and FCK is 20 newton per mm square that is M20 grade of concrete and FOI is equal to 415 newton per mm square that is FE415 steel so now this is the given data based on this data we have to design a beam now first we will try as the width is all, uh, already given to us so we need not worry so that will be the width of the beam that is b is equal to 300 mm next is we have to fix the depth of the beam so let us uh, start with fixing the depth of the beam so usually depth of the beam that is capital d is equal to 1 by 12 to 1 by 15th of the span it is taken as 1 by 12 to 1 15th of the span so as our span is 6 meters so 600 divided by 12 or 600 divided by 15 so that will be equal to uh, what you can say 500 or 400 mm 500 mm or 400 mm this is 6000 by 12 or 6000 by 15 so that will be equal to either uh, if you so solve this you will get as 500 mm if you take this you will get it as 400 mm so in between this we will try to fix the overall depth of the beam so we will assume that or we will take the overall depth of the beam as 450 mm so in between this so we can take any value so let us take now 450 mm as the overall depth of the beam so overall depth is nothing but so now for example if this is the beam we have so this is nothing but the overall depth of the beam we are going to take it as 450 mm then next let us try to calculate what is the effective depth of the beam so for example if this is the reinforcement what we have then next is we have to calculate the effective depth effective depth is nothing but from top face of this concrete to the center of the reinforcement center of the reinforcement as this total depth is 450 mm that is total depth is 450 mm minus what we will do we will subtract this cover so we will take this cover as 25 mm that is minus of 25 mm so let us assume this bar diameter as 20 mm so half means it will be 10 half will be 10 so this distance will be 10 so therefore total is 450 minus of clear cover that is 25 mm minus of this 10 mm so minus of 10 mm so therefore the effective depth will be equal to 45 415 mm 
then next is we will try to calculate the effective span so already this uh, procedure already we have covered in the previous video if you want you can refer that so as to calculate the effective span we have two criteria out of which we have to take the list of two values so first one is that center to center of supports center to center of supports so for example if this is the beam we have if this is the beam we have then next is we have one support on the left side one support on the right side so this effective span will be equal to center to center of support this is center of the support this is the center of the support center to center of this support so this clear span is already given to us that is 6 meters so this width of the support it is given as 230 mm width of the support is 230 mm so we are calculating center to center distance so therefore this distance will be 0.23 divided by 2 similarly here center to center distance will be like uh, half distance will be 0.23 divided by 2 so therefore clear span plus 0.23 by 2 plus 0.23 by 2 so therefore this will be equal to 6 plus 0.23 by 2 plus 0.23 by 2 so that will be equal to 6.23 meters then next comes is another criteria is clear span plus the effective depth so clear span is already given 6 meters and effective depth is 415 meters so therefore if you add up we will get 6.415 meters so we have to take list of these two values so least is 6.23 meters so therefore list of 2 is uh, 6.23 meter therefore this is the effective span then next we will go to the load calculations so what are loads they are going to come already had said one is the imposed load or live load so it is given to us that is 12 kilo newton per meter we have then next is we have to calculate the self weight of the beam based on the cross-sectional dimension and density of concrete so we have uh, width of the beam B is equal to 300 mm we have fixed overall depth of 450 mm then next is we are going to calculate per meter span of the beam multiplied by the density of concrete so if you multiply this you will get answer as 3.375 kilo newton per meter this is for per meter span this is the load which is going to come so if you are going to add up so total load w will be equal to 12 this is the live load plus this is the self fit 12 plus 3.375 we are going to get answer as 15.375 kilo newton meter kilo newton meter we have so we will uh, try to calculate the factored load that is w u so as to calculate the factored load we are going to multiply safety factor that is 1.5 so 1.5 multiplied by 15.375 we are going to get answer as 23.06 kilo newton per meter then next based on that udl what we got we will try to calculate the bending moment and shear force so for example if i am going to draw that beam so it will be somewhat like this this is the beam now so out on which we are going to have a udl of uh, 23.06 23.06 so for this loading we have to calculate what is the maximum bending moment and what is the shear force so how to calculate the bending moment so bending moment is very simple that is mu is equal to w l square by 8 w u into l square by 8 so w u is nothing but the ultimate load what we have that is 23.06 multiplied by l is nothing but the effective span that is 6.23 square divided by 8 so therefore this will be equal to triple one point eight eight kilo newton meter this is nothing but the bending moment next is we'll try to calculate the shear force vu is equal to wl by 2 wu into l by 2 wu is 
स्पैन इज सिक्स पॉइंट टू थ्री इफेक्ट इज स्पैन डेड बाई टू डब्ल्यू एल बाई टू सो इफ यू कैलकुलेट विल गेट आंसर एज सेवेंटी वन पॉइंट एट थ्री किलो न्यूटन सो फॉर दिस मूवमेंट एंड शेयर फोर्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिजाइन द रेनफोर्समेंट देन नेक्स्ट आफ्टर गेटिंग द वैल्यूज ऑफ बेंडिंग मूवमेंट वी विल ट्राई टू चेक द सेक्शन वेदर सेक्शन विल बी ओवर रेनफोर्स्ड और अंडर रेनफोर्स्ड और सिंगली रेनफोर्स्ड और डबली रेनफोर्स्ड सेक्शन सो देर फॉर फर्स्ट बेस्ड ऑन द इक्वेशन वॉट वी हैव स्टडीड अर्लियर दैट इज लिमिटिंग मूवमेंट इज इक्वल टू पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स एफ सी के इन टू बी डी स्क्वायर इन टू एक्स यू मैक्स बाई डी इन टू ब्रैकेट ऑफ वन माइनस पॉइंट फोर टू एक्स यू मैक्स बाई डी सो एक्स यू मैक्स बाई डी फॉर ए गिवन स्टील इट इज इक्वल टू पॉइंट फोर एट वी हैव ऑलरेडी वी हैव स्टडीड दिस सो देर फॉर यू सब्सिट्यूट वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एक्स यू मैक्स बाई डी एज पॉइंट फोर एट दैट इज पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स एफ सी के इज एम ट्वेंटी वी हैव डी इज थ्री हंड्रेड एम एम डी इज फोर वन फाइव स्क्वायर एक्स यू मैक्स बाई डी वैल्यू इज पॉइंट फोर एट वन माइनस ऑफ पॉइंट फोर टू इन टू एक्स यू मैक्स बाई डी वैल्यू इज पॉइंट फोर एट सो इफ यू कैलकुलेट विल गेट आंसर एज वन फोर्टी टू पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स किलो न्यूटन मीटर सो दिस इज द मूवमेंट कैरिंग कैपेसिटी फॉर ए गिवन सेक्शन नाउ सो अवर मूवमेंट विच इज गोइंग टू कम ऑन द बीम इट इज लेस दैट इज अवर मूवमेंट इज मूवमेंट कमिंग इज ट्रिपल वन पॉइंट एट एट बट इट्स मूवमेंट कैरिंग कैपेसिटी इज वन फोर्टी टू पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स सो इट इज लेस दैन द मूवमेंट विच इज कमिंग सो देर फोर एम यू इज लेस दैन एम यू एल आई एम सो देर फोर वी कैन से दैट दिस सेक्शन इज अ सिंगली रेनफोर्स्ड सेक्शन वी कैन डिजाइन इट एज अ सिंगली रेनफोर्स्ड सेक्शन देन नेक्स्ट वी विल ट्राई टू कैलकुलेट द डेप which is provided that is point m is equal to 0.138 fck bd square so we will try to check for the depth this depth so other terms these terms you can bring it downside that is mu divided by 0.138 fck bd and out of this square uh, if you bring it this side it will be square root so it will be square root so if you substitute in this formula that is mu is equal to 1.88 into 10 raise to 6 so we will try to convert from kilonewton meter to the newton mm the next is uh, 0.138 we have fck is 20 b is 300 so if you calculate we'll get answer as 367.5 mm so this is the d required d minimum d required is 367.5 but what we have provided is 415 so therefore d provided is greater than the d required so therefore the section what we have provided it is adequate so as to resist this movement so therefore it is safe for example if it is less then next we have to increase the depth and we have to satisfy this criteria then next we will try to calculate the steel what is the steel required that is calculation calculate ast area of steel in tension so we have one formula this formula is very important you have to remember this formula that is ast Is equal to point five into F C K divided by F of Y into bracket of one minus square root of one minus four point six into M U divided by F C K B D square multiplied by B into D. So we'll substitute the values. That is point five F C K is twenty. We have F of Y is four one five one minus of square root of one minus of four point six. Into M U we have that is triple one point eight eight. We will try to convert it into Newton M M. That is into ten raised to six divided by F C K is twenty. We have B is three hundred and D is four one five square multiplied by B is three hundred and D is four one five. If you substitute all these values, we will get answer as eight seventy two M M square. Eight seventy two M M square. That means this much area of steel is required. Eight seventy two mm square of steel is required. So let us assume now. We'll assume the diameter of the bar. That is, we'll assume now twenty mm dia bar. So let us calculate the area of one bar. So area of one bar will be equal to pi by four into d square. So that will be equal to around three one four. That will be equal to three one four. so how much area is required 872 so 872 
uh, if you want to calculate the number of bars if you want to calculate the number of uh, bars so that will be equal to 872 divided by 314 so we'll get approximately 2.8 something we'll get so what we can do we cannot provide 2.8 bars so we can round it off to higher value that is we'll take it as three numbers so therefore what we can do we can provide three bars of 20 mm dia three bars of 20 mm dia so now this is the area of steel which we are going to provide so let us try to calculate what is the ast provided so area of steel provided so how to calculate area of this bars now pi by 4 into d square this is pi by 4 into d square d is nothing but 20 mm square multiplied by we have provided three bars so therefore the area of steel provided will be 942 mm square so requirement is 872 ast required so AST provided is 942 mm square. Then next is that there are certain checks what we have to do. We have to check for shear and we have to check for deflection. So already we have seen how to check for shear in the earlier videos also. So now let us check for shear for a given beam. So already we have calculated the shear force that is 71.83 kilo newton we have then next is that we'll try to calculate the nominal shear stress that is equal to vu by b into d vu by b into d vu is nothing but 71.83 so instead of kilo newton we'll make it as newton that is multiplied by 20, 10 raised to 3 divided by b into d b is nothing but 300 d is nothing but small d effective depth that is 415 so if you calculate we'll get answer as 0.576 newton per mm square so now this has to be checked with tau c max value so if you refer this so we have to the nominal shear stress tau v is equal to vu by b into d so based on this formula we have calculated the nominal shear stress then next we have to check whether this uh, tau v is less than tau c so they have given the maximum shear stress tau c max so for m20 grade of concrete it is 2.8 that is tau c max so we will try to compare it with uh, tau c max value so tau c max value is 2.8 and tau v value is 0 0.576 so this tau v is less than tau c so we don't have any problem if it is exceeding this tau c max then next we have to revise the section so as it is less than that so we can go for the we can proceed with the problem then next is we are going to calculate we are going to check this tau v value with tau c value if tau v is less than if tau v is less than tau c then next we have to provide the nominal shear reinforcement if tau v if it is greater than tau c then next we have to provide we have to design it for shear so let us check now which will be the criteria so now we have to calculate now tau c value so how to calculate the tau c value so as to calculate this tau c value so if you see this uh, the design uh, shear strength of concrete tau c they have given so we have to calculate this tau c value from this table so as to calculate this tau c value we have to calculate this term that is ast by bd into 100 this is nothing but the percentage of steel and this is for a given grade of concrete so first let us try to calculate what is the percentage of steel so percentage of steel is nothing but ast by bd multiplied by 100 so 100 ast provided is 942 divided by b is 300 d is nothing but 415 so if you calculate we'll get answer somewhere around 0.756 this is nothing but the percentage of steel then next is we'll refer this uh, is code that is we have concrete grade as m20 and we are having 0 0.756 0 0.756 so for m20 it is 0 0.56 so tau c value is 0 0.56 so here they have given tau c so tau c value will be equal to 0 0.56 newton per mm square so now this has to be compared with tau v value 
So tau v has to be compared with tau c. So tau v value is 0.576 and the tau c value is 0.56. So as tau v is greater than tau c, we have to design for shear. If tau v is less than tau c, then next we can provide the nominal shear reinforcement. Then next the extra shear what we are going to have so that we will try to calculate uh, now we will try to design the shear reinforcement so before that let's, let us try to calculate the shear resisted by the concrete so how to calculate so vc is equal to tau c into b into d so tau c just now we have calculated that is 0.56 b is 300 d is 415 so therefore shear resisted by the concrete is 69.7 then next what shear reinforcement we are going to design so how much shear it has to resist that we will try to calculate that is v u s that is shear that has to be resisted by the reinforcement so that is equal to total shear minus shear resisted by the concrete so what remaining shear we have that has to be resisted by the steel reinforcement so v u is equal to 71.83 minus vc is 69.72 so if you calculate we'll get answer as 2.11 kilo newton so this much steel uh, uh, shear has to be resisted by the reinforcement additional reinforcement what we are going to provide so now let us take or let us assume 6 mm diameter bars of fe 250 steel and let it be two legged so already we have seen what do you mean by two legged, four legged. So we will assume six mm dia bars which is two legged. So therefore area of this stirrups that is equal to area of one bar that is pi by four into d square that is six square. So multiplied by two as it is a two legged. So therefore it is multiplied by two. So two multiplied by pi by four into six square it will be 56.5 mm square. 56.5 mm square so f of y is nothing but 250 newton per mm square then next what reinforcement we are going to provide at what spacing it has to be provided that we will check there are certain criteria so spacing sv will be equal to 0.87 f of y into asv into d divided by v u s so therefore 0.87 we have f of y is we have assumed fe 250 area of steel uh, stirrups that is 56.5 effective depth is 415 and vus is nothing but the shear that has to be resisted by the steel that is 2.11 kilo newton we have so that will try to convert it in newton so if you substitute we will get answer spacing that as 2416 mm the next there are certain criteria with which we have to check the spacing requirement so we cannot provide directly this so one first one is the calculated is 2416 this is the calculated value then next is 0 0.75 times of d that is effective depth so 0 0.75 times of 415 it will be 311 mm or minimum we have to provide 300 mm this is the minimum what has to be provided so if uh, the value is what we are getting if it is greater than 300 mm then next we can provide 300 mm if the other values for example if this value you are getting it as 250 mm so then we can provide 250 mm so as all the other values are greater than 300 mm so minimum we have to provide 300 mm so therefore what we can do we can provide two leg 6 mm diameter stirrups at 300 mm center to center this is the check for shear then next is we will go for deflection we are going to check for deflection so there is certain criteria based on which we will check so the maximum l permitted l by d ratio that is length effective length to the effective depth ratio that is equal to f1 f2 f3 into bracket of l by d basic so this f1 f2 f3 are nothing but the modification factors and l by d is nothing but effective span to the depth ratio basic uh, ratio or also they are given in the code book so that also we will try to see so the modification factor that is f1 is modification factor for tension seal 
f2 is nothing but modification factor for compression steel and f3 is nothing but modification factor for flanged section so as we don't have a flanged section so therefore this value will be equal to 1 so f2 value is nothing but this is for compression reinforcement as it is a singly reinforced beam therefore it will be 1 only remaining part is f1 that is nothing but modification factor for tension reinforcement modification factor for tension reinforcement we have to calculate f1 value so now how to calculate this f1 value that is modification factor for tension reinforcement so as to calculate that we require pt that is percentage of steel earlier to this we have calculated that is 0.756 percentage then next is we will try to calculate this fs value so therefore here uh, they have given so let me uh, show you So here uh, they have given that is uh, for control of uh, deflection already we have seen this for a flange section already we have seen this formula after that itself they have given control for deflection they have given the basic values of span to the effective depth ratio that is for cantilever it is 7 for simply supported it is 20 and for continuity, uh, continuous it is 26. So as we are having a simply supported beam so therefore L by D will be equal to 20. Then next is uh, they have given this graph that is uh, modification factor for tension reinforcement that is uh, f of uh, 1 what we have said. The next is modification factor for compression reinforcement f2. The next uh, uh, another for uh, flange width also they have given right. So as we do we are having a singly reinforced section so let us try to calculate this uh, uh, modification factor for tension reinforcement so as to calculate that they have given the formula that is fs is equal to 0.58 into f of i into area of cross section steel required divided by est provided so that is what just now i had shown that is 0.58 into f of i multiplied by est required by est provided so 0.58 we have f of i is 415 AST required is 872 and AST provided is 942. So if you calculate, we will get FS value as 223 Newton per mm square. So the next is from figure 4. That is this from figure 4. We have got this FS value. FS value is how much? This is 223. So you can see there are certain curves here. Uh, 290, 240, 190. So therefore, it is somewhere like uh, it is 220 we have. So therefore, we'll assume we'll take it as 240 itself. The next is here at the bottom they have given percentage of tension reinforcement. So that also we have uh, calculated percentage of uh, tension reinforcement. So PT also we have taken 0 0.75 means somewhere here we'll have and then next if you go upwards somewhere here it is going to uh, reach. So therefore if you move towards left this is nothing but the modification factor. So 0.75 if you reach somewhere here and if you go to the left side it will be nearly like uh, this is 0.8 this is 1 this is 1.2 it is somewhere nearly nearly will get somewhere here. So therefore, this value you can take it as 1.15, 1.15. So as we don't have compression steel, so therefore F2 will be equal to 1 and we don't have any flange of beam, so therefore F3 will be equal to 1. Then next is L by D basic, just now I had shown you, this is equal to 24 simply supported beam. So therefore, maximum L by D ratio provided that is equal to L by D basic multiplied by f1 f2 f3 uh, so this uh, this is f1 this is f2 this is f3 multiplied by l by d basic 
So this is uh, f1 is 1.15, f2 is 1, f3 is 1 we have, L by D basic is 20. If you calculate, we'll get answer as 23. This is nothing but the maximum L by D ratio what we can have. But actually how much we have provided that we'll try to check. So L by D provided that is equal to L is nothing but effective length that is 6230 we have provided divided by effective depth what we have provided is 415 so that is equal to 15 so that is less than maximum L by D ratio maximum L by D ratio is 23 15 it is less than 23 so therefore it is the section what we have provided is safe in deflection so we have checked for shear and we have checked for deflection so now after uh, doing the, the design, we have to do the detailing. This is also very much important. We have to draw a longitudinal section of the beam. So here this is the clear span. Clear span is 6 meters. We have the supports that is 230 mm width on the left side as well as on the right side. Then next is we have provided the tension reinforcement. Tension reinforcement is nothing but this bottom reinforcement what we have designed. So we have designed this as 3 bars of 20 mm dia. Then next is we have provided this uh, stirrups that is 2 left 6 mm dia about 300 mm center to center. This we have provided in check for shear. Then next is let us provide or some so nominal reinforcement that is anchor bars that is 2 bars of 10 mm dia. So this is nothing but the longitudinal section of the beam. So let us show one cross section also of the beam that is our beam width is 300 mm effective depth is uh, what you can say 415 and overall depth is 450 mm so we have provided three bars of 20 mm dia at the bottom so here what we have provided the next is we have provided two bars of 20, uh, 10 mm dia at top so in this way we have to show the cross section of the beam and we have to show the longitudinal section of the beam. In this way, the design of the beam has to be done and at the end, detailing of the beam has to be shown. So, uh, you can take one uh, similar problem as an assignment question. So, we are going to have uh, same like uh, RCC beam which is supported on 300 mm thick wall. So previously it was 200 mm thick. Now it is 230 mm thick. So now it is supported on 300 mm thick wall, which is having a clear distance of 6 meters. So previously we had 6 meters, uh, which is going, uh, the beam carries a service load of 10 kN per meter. So in the previous problem, it was 12 kN per meter. So we can have uh, in this problem, it is 10 kN per meter. Only that is the change. Other things will remain same excluding the self weight. So uh, what all things we have calculated in the previous problem same thing has to be done. Only this is varying and this is varying. Other M20 grade of concrete and FE415 steel we have. So based on this data we have to design the beam. So this will be your assignment question.